Welcome to a Fort Knox update. I'm John Fort here with Michael Hurlston, the CEO of Lumentum. You guys just reported earnings a couple of weeks ago on August 12th, a number of analyst upgrades after that. And I really want to understand how the optical technology that you guys uh, create in this time when the data center is transforming so much, especially driven by AI, how all that's playing out for you. Yeah, no, demand couldn't be hotter, John. We've just, as you said, we had record earnings. Uh, our guidance gives us record revenue for the company. The company's been around for 10 years, and this is really the top of, of our performance. So a couple of things. The optical engines are really the connectivity tissue inside the data center. We connect these GPUs that you've talked about on your show so many times, uh, the compute engines that drive the data center. And then quite often you need to link data centers to one another and you have optical connections that do that. Uh, interestingly enough, of course, you have undersea cables that are driving data centers and, and traffic from one continent to another. We're involved in that. So we play a pretty broad role in connecting inside the data center, connecting all the GPUs and storage and everything else, and then outside the data center, both long and, and uh, intermediate kind of backhaul. Um, because of the back and forth shuttling of data that's necessary with AI, and because of the uh, importance of older data, where which before would have been in tape and storage somewhere, I, I imagine um, optical components and that speed of delivery perhaps becomes more important for general use uh, across more pieces of the data center, perhaps, than it might have been 10 years ago? Yeah, that's, that's right. I mean, one of the things that drives optics is speed. And so when we got involved in data centers and and you're absolutely right. You had this e ecosystem of tape drives and, and, you know, very antiquated storage. Now everything is real time. And so your speeds need to increase. We've gone from 200 gig to 400 gig, 800 gig. The next generation is 1.6 terabit per second. So you have just ever increasing speeds to go and drive the connectivity. And part of that is to make sure the data that exists is available at any point in time. How does the hybrid um, architecture of the modern data center affect that as well? There are so many companies that need to have uh, certain data, maybe even certain compute on premise. They've got uh, other compute, perhaps in the public cloud. Um, when you've got optical uh, technologies that are keeping all of that uh, connected and you want it to be invisible to the employee, the customer, where uh, the data sits, how do the optical components come to play? Yeah, I mean, that, that, what's one of the interesting things that have dri has driven our business. Uh, historically, we provided optical components to telcos, companies like AT&T, Verizon, but now all the long haul is being consumed by hyperscalers. They want to connect these data centers to one another. And as you said in your question, how they have data that's both older data and new data that can mix, that can be hybrid, but they need to be able to make that available. Who knows when you're going to call up a search on something that happened 20, 40, 60 years ago. That data needs to be available to you as a user. And so the best way to do that is to have high speed connections running between the data centers and having optics drive that is the best way to do it. Nothing moves faster, as you know, than the speed of light. And light is really what we're talking about here is providing that backbone between these data centers that's really driven a large part of our business over the last couple of years. Is, the, is there an enterprise component of this because of the, um, the on-premise piece of hybrid that is either new or or quickly growing because of the desire for uh, for speed and um, the, the desire to have this data residing in multiple different places. Yeah, it's it, it's been an interesting market for us. The enterprise customers that have historically consumed on-prem compute now are looking to expand their data centers, and when they do that. The best way to, to connect 
different compute inside the, even a smaller on-prem data center or one data center to another is optics. As I said a minute ago, it's the fastest way to connect devices. And so the biggest market for us is these hyperscalers that you've talked about so many times on the show, and that's driving a good portion of our business. But a subset of that business is now coming from enterprise, where enterprise is also trying for their on-prem data centers, also trying to drive higher speed, higher bandwidth, and that's where our, our technology comes in. So where's the incremental opportunity for you based on this landscape, moving quickly, what you're seeing, what are the technologies that you're developing that are going to continue to set you apart? We have a, a bunch of, of different drivers, John. Uh, one is the transceivers. And transceivers, think about these as USB drives that plug into the back of a server or a switch inside the data center. It's just a simple plug that converts electrical signals to light. And that transceiver, that transforming of electrical energy to light, we're a small player in that market today but we think we have an increasing opportunity to sell our transceivers into the hyperscaler market, or as you pointed out in enterprise. Second big growth driver is in switches. So today, if you think about a data center, most of the switches are electrical. They use semiconductor solutions from companies like Broadcom, um, maybe a, a switch box from a company like Arista, we have an offering that reduces the total cost of ownership, but keeps everything in the optical domain, something we call an optical circuit switch. And that switch product is something that we're super excited about that's a, a, a big growth driver. The last is, is our laser technology. So underneath all of optics are lasers. You think about the old lasers from Star Wars. These are very thin, high-powered lasers that can go into these transceivers that we just talked about a second ago, or actually could be what we call co-packaged optics, where the laser solution moves right up next to the switch or to a GPU. And in that context, we have a big leading position with our semiconductor solutions that gives us yet another tailwind. So a lot of good things going on for us, John. So you're sitting right underneath a, a $10 billion market cap right now, a little north of, of $9 billion. And the networking space, the data center networking space is big. How are you looking at M&A versus partnerships as your avenue to scale? Is your intent for you know, Lumentum to be sort of a, the next networking giant in this data center era or are you looking to remain focused on that optical piece specifically and partner up to get your technology most broadly deployed? Yeah, I, I think we, we make two kinds of products. One is, is, a, is a finished product. Think of it like a PC and optics. These transceivers that I just talked about are finished manufactured products. But then we also make components. We make underlying bits and bobs that you assemble together into these finished products. Our core DNA is, is in the components end of the business, making semiconductors like these lasers that we just talked to, uh, making other optical components that go into this. So as, as we think about the M&A landscape, we would like to stretch more along the components axis. What's interesting about this market is that we often compete. Some of our strongest competitors are also some of our largest customers. So we compete with them in these finished products, the transceivers, the switches, but then we're also a supplier of these underlying components that make up the technology. And uh, it's a very interesting business. I, I come from the world of semiconductors. There, there was clear delineation between competitor and customer. Here, it's a much more blurry line. Well, I mean, the line in semiconductors seems to have blurred as well when you look across the hyperscalers that are designing their own chips and trying to re reduce their dependency on the NVIDIA's, AMD's, et cetera, that are trying to get a premium for, for the AI chips as well. Is this just a reality where the hyperscalers are um, gaining such size 
and have a view on what technologies drive efficiency, they're just naturally going to start doing some pieces of that, just like you had uh, integrated graphics uh, from CPU companies. Now you're going to get all kinds of integrated technologies within the data center uh, from these hyperscalers, and the, the specialists will just have to prove their metal. Yeah, no, I know. The, the hyperscalers are smart smart group of engineers. They employ engineers that can do optics. They, as you correctly call out, they, de they deploy engineers that can do semiconductor solutions. What we found is our best recipe is to partner. You asked in your previous question, do we think about partnering? Do we think about M&A? We really do think about partnering and we actually will take in components that our customers, in some cases, hyperscalers design. Uh, we really have clo close partnerships. We've announced partnerships with companies like NVIDIA. And we talked a minute ago about this co-packaged optics idea where we bring the optical engine up close to their, their switch. They do a lot of that design work. We partner up with them and we're able to go and supply underlying components. That's worked out really well for us. There's no doubt that the hyperscalers are going to continue to find ways to eat into optical suppliers, semiconductor suppliers, whatever it might be, it's our job uh, to stay ahead and to continue to innovate and, and be at the forefront. So there's this opportunity for us to go in and partner. Well, you're setting the table right there for the next decade at Lumentum, Michael Hurlston, CEO. Thank you for joining me on Fort Knox.